how do the spaces you interact with make you, you? What happens when you articulate that space? These are central questions we discussed during the second part of our series, Mapping the Wondrous West Side. This month, our central questions revolve around the concept of relational space. What is a relational space? We thought of it as a space that is shaped by and infused with meaning through the relationships and interactions happening in this space. We can think of many places we frequent every day that can be considered relational. Our own houses, community centers, shops, parks, anywhere with interactions that characterize the place as distinct and meaningful to its inhabitants. We begin the discussion with asking participants where they go to cultivate positive experiences in their neighborhood and who do they interact with in these spaces. As a group, we realized that in many ways, the people and wildlife we interacted with in our favorite spots made the space even more meaningful than it would be without these things. We then explored how spaces are made more positive through these relationships. The research we collected indicates that space built with additions, such as parklets, benches, flora, and water features, increased mental health and physical activity in city residents. In addition, these installations promote community connections and interactions. We also discussed how the spaces you inhabit shape who you are. How do we articulate these spaces? Through conversation or even art? We dove into the concept of relativity, thinking about how everyone experiences a space differently depending on the physical laws and properties of the space, as well as one's position in a space. Relational spaces are not only defined by human interaction, but also between us and the natural world specifically focusing on urban planning and the incorporation of green spaces as an avenue to these interactions. We looked at how relational space was conveyed in artistic pieces before handing the floor over to Rudiger Kraus. Rudy introduced us to his art installation, Where I Live, a piece sparked by a personal tragedy. Rudy describes his grieving process as involving daily walks through the Carisdale neighborhood. Rudy started to collect photography, sketchings, and other elements from the Carisdale neighborhood to construct a piece that reflects both general experiences in Carisdale and his unique connection to this place. He explained how layers of new meaning emerged every time he interacted with his neighborhood. Similarly, he invites us to interact with his art piece and experience what he means by the layers of meaning a place expresses. He told us that while he is no longer the same person who created Where I Live a number of years ago, the piece and the stories associated with the piece are woven into his being. Through his articulation of the place he lived, he embodied his home and anchored his heart in his neighborhood. Notice a gray square representing a survey marker in the pavement that city planners use for creating a topographic map. He decoded it for us as his compass, as a metaphor of his life forward, a way to navigate himself around, and ultimately, to allow for perpetual transformation. Embodying the places we live is essential to human experience to develop a strong sense of self. If you articulate this sense, like the example we saw with Rudy, it brings transformational power to ourselves and the whole community. With Rudy, we realize how embodied space is articulated space, and ultimately the development of ourselves, uniquely being.